Hello everyone. Uh, this is Engineer Dr. Olam Gwazdar, Associate Professor, Civil Engineering Department, University of Bahrain. Today I will be presenting my idea about a comprehensive solution to mitigating and preventing informal settlements using a non-conformity approach. So informal settlements have become a big problem all around the world, especially in the developing countries. These informal settlements have environmental issues, they have a low uh, quality of life, and they become breeding grounds for the criminal activities. The non-conformity approach uh, has three stages. The first one is root cause analysis. The second one is the preventive measure for preventing the problem in the future and the corrective action for the current problem. So in the root cause analysis for the informal settlements, we have to look who are, who are the people who are living in these settlements. So these people are low income, low wage workers. So from where these low wage workers are coming? They are coming from adjoining underdeveloped areas. Why are these workers coming to these informal settlements? They come here for better employment opportunities, better future for their families, because they feel the development which is done in these areas uh, provides them more opportunities to earn, which is not available in their own areas. So to solve this problem, we will apply a power law. What is power law? Power law is similar to the law of gravitation, which states that the attraction between two bodies is equal or is proportional to the masses of the bodies and inversely proportional to the distance. So when you apply it to two areas, two cities, then the people attracted towards an area are proportional to the, uh, the size of the area, the population of the area and the development in the area. The more the development happens, more attraction you will have towards that area. So the government thinks they should do more development in the metropolitan area because it is bigger. And what it is doing, it is even making bigger, bigger and bigger because now it is attracting more people. And these people are increasing the problem because they are increasing the informal settlements. So the development in the metropolitan areas is actually increasing the problem. So what do we need to do? We need to shift our focus towards, or some of the focus towards underdeveloped areas. We have to give them more chances for development. We have to provide them more investment. We have to provide them more opportunities to grow in their own areas. This approach has the following benefits. The first benefit is you are proactively tackling the solution, uh, tackling the problems which, are, uh, which will arise in the metropolitan areas. This approach gives a more efficient solution for even for the development work because to do development in underdeveloped areas is much easier and it will uh, be welcomed more as compared to already congested metropolitan areas. And the last thing is it is cheaper. Why it is cheaper? Because the land and the facilities in the underdeveloped areas are much cheaper than the metropolitan areas. So we have taken uh, care of the first two parts of non-conformity approach. Now we're going towards the third part, which is applying the corrective action. So corrective action will be applied by another concept, another civil engineering concept, which is known as sieve analysis. So in the sieve analysis, we separate out the weak elements from the mix of material so that uh, they don't weaken the entire structure by being in the uh, by being in the mix of material. So uh, for a society the material or the constituents are its residents. So who are the weak residents among these, among the society? These are the criminal elements, as already mentioned. These criminal elements are actually in favor of uh, not developing these settlements so that they can thrive more, they can hide there, they can breed there. So we need a crackdown against these criminal elements. Once it is done, then you involve the people, the residents of that area, to become part of the planning and the development work in that area. So you form a union, you ask them, okay, give your opinion, give your suggestions. Once they come up with a plan, then you support them. You employ them on the same projects that they, they are seeking for that area. So by doing that, you make them owners of that area. You give them ownership of their own development. So you will face less resistance from them. And then uh, you, will, you are employing them, you're providing the employment right at their house, their doorstep. And you, uh, doing, you are doing the development and at the same time you are decreasing the burden, the extra burden of these informal settlements from your existing projects because now you have the main resource from the area itself, the manpower. 
and what it will do in future it will make sure that these residents become the protector and guardian of this area so in the future they will be the one who will be taking care of the area not you or obviously you are required but not in the same manner as you will be doing for the other areas so this is my idea i hope the committee likes it thank you so much